Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Pythonic Accountant. In this one, we're going to talk about a really interesting technology that I'm very excited about in the AI field called generative, generative AI. Um, the two main areas that are of focus right now are image generation and then text generation. Today we're going to show a little bit of text generation. So one of the uh, you know, leading companies that uh, I've seen out there focused on this is called OpenAI, we're gonna show today. And they have a site that you can go to to literally play around with this stuff. It's uh, the URL is beta.openai.com slash playground. You can create an account, sign up, get free access to it. So I'm gonna show a little bit of where it could be, you know, potentially used in the field of accounting. So let's start with uh, say analytical procedures. Um, let's say you wanted to, um, you know, ask for its advice on um, doing substantive analytics procedures, um, doing an audit or something. So I said, I'm preparing to do a financial audit of a hospital. What are some ways I can perform substantive analytical procedures over inpatient revenues? And let's see what it comes up with. And this is trained on just like tons and tons of data. Um, okay, this is kind of cool. Recalculate inpatient revenues using the hospital's accounting records. Uh, okay, that's a little bit generic, fine. Um, review the billing records, view if I charge. Okay, that sounds like more real substitute. So this isn't 100% perfect and 100% accurate, but it could still give you some good ideas. Um, analyze inpatient revenues by payer type to identify trends. Okay, and compare inpatient revenues to prior periods. That makes sense. Review the contract with managed care organization to ensure required payments are received. That's pretty good. So really interesting. Um, you know, not perfect and probably not something you would want to use in production today, but still kind of neat to show the possibilities here. What I'd love to see is if you had some very nuanced uh, things or specific data available, maybe it could give some ideas around how to use that data. Um, so let's show another one around internal controls. So I did, um, these are some preset prompts that I created just to kind of make it quicker. And then looking to see what the uh, output is from the GPT-3 model, which is the model that we're using. Um, so what are three key financial reporting controls a restaurant should have in place? Just, you know, kind of for fun, see what it says. A system to track income expenses, a generic, okay, fine. Uh, help control spending, through a budget, that makes sense. Track inventory levels and food costs. Okay, not, not mind blowing here, but still kind of fun. Um, let's look at one that's a totally different use case on summarizing text. So um, this is kind of crazy. If you haven't been following, there is a crypto, you know, cri the crypto world has been insane lately. And there was a crypto exchange that kind of just went down called FTX. And so I grabbed the text from a recent Wall Street Journal article on this. And I um, wanted to demonstrate how the GPT-3 model can um, very easily and quickly summarize uh, a lot, lot of text. And so there's a, a limit on how much it will do um, in the uh, playground mode. But if you actually pay for credits, you can do a ton more. Like you could probably summarize a whole book probably. Um, so I said, okay, this is all the input up to here. And then down here, I said, please explain this article to a second grader and explain how it will impact CPA firms with crypto exchange audit clients. And when I tested this out before, I gave a pretty good response. Um, so kind of cool to see how well it can actually help. So um, this article discusses how SBF, the founder, uh, tried to influence politicians to pass a bill that would have given the um, Commodity Futures Trading Commission more power to regulate crypto industry. However, they collapsed and the bill is on hold. This may impact CPA firms with crypto exchange audit clients because the, the SEC is now taking more strict approach to regulation, which may mean more work for the CPA firms. So kind of cool. I mean, it's not perfect and you can probably read that and come up with that on your own, but I love the idea that, you know, we could incorporate AI into helping provide like a reasonable executive summary and context around why it's important uh, for things. So this could save a lot of time and uh, a lot of frustrations. So let's show a couple more examples. Um, really excited about this as well. You can actually have this write Python code, which to me is just insane. Um, so what I did was, um, let's see. Oh yeah, this is, this is really cool. 
So th th this was the output um, from before. I, it'll probably give you something similar. So I'm actually not going to rerun it. Uh, well, I'll, okay, I'll rerun it. Let's see what it comes up with something similar. So let's say um, what we're doing here is we're saying write a py write Python code to create a simple financial accounting program. It gives some kind of parameters around uh, a couple of classes, one called accounts and one called trial balance, uh, what they should be able to do and then give some kind of steps that it should take around creating the initial balances and then a recorded transaction. Just to kick off the fact that it, I know it, I want it to code, I'm just gonna say import pandas as PD, even though it's probably not even gonna use pandas. And um, what's probably gonna happen is it's gonna give me partial code back because it doesn't always give enough text to finish what you want it to. So let's see how much it gives us. And then if it needs a little bit more, um, I'll just run it again and it'll give us more response. And then I'm gonna pop it into pandas or into um, Colab to see if it actually is correct. So, okay, as I suspected, it didn't finish, but take a look, it's, it's writing actual code and it, it probably will work. So let's see what happens here. Um, Self.account is like the beginning of what it needs to do here. And if it finishes it, hopefully it will do the rest of the instructions noted above. And then if it works, um, it'd be pretty awesome. Yeah, perfect. So let's take this, let's copy and paste the code. And I'm gonna delete out this one that I had before and paste it. And let's just run this, see if it is valid Python code. And it is, and oh man, this is awesome. Let me check it out. I didn't write a lick of code in here other than the import. This wrote all the code for me kept to the specific parameters and even wrote in classes. Like it's pretty amazing um, what you can do with uh, the fact that you can kind of automate writing a Python code. Anyways, it blows my mind. Hope this is blowing your mind too. Um, so the last thing I'll, I'll, okay, two more things and then uh, let you play around yourself is um, the creative piece. This is really fun. So let's say um, I wanted to ask it to write a creative, uh, where is it? There we go. Let's say I wanted to, to write this creative uh, output on a New York Times review of a book that has not been written. And by the way, this is nothing, this has no knowledge of current events in the past year or so. It just goes through 2021. So even though Elon Musk just bought Twitter and is already killing it, um, <laughs> The, the model doesn't know anything about that. So let's see what it says if I ask it to write a review of Elon's new book, How I Bought and Then Completely Destroyed Twitter in Less Than Six Weeks. Probably going to give something funny, probably something awesome. But the cool thing is it it's um, amazing how re like real the responses look. So in his new book, How I Bought and Completely Destroyed Twitter in Less Than Six Weeks, Elon Musk tells the story of how he became the owner of Twitter and quickly ran it into the ground. Um, details how he approached the CEO with an offer. If <laughs> that's not correct, it was obviously much more than five billion, but it's still fun. Outlines his plans for destroying the platform, which that's not what he actually. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Included selling it off for parts, shutting it down completely, or turning it into a porn site. Amazing. He also describes how he used Twitter to spread false and misleading information about Tesla, which led to the company's stock price crashing. It's a so obviously not uh, for telling the true future, but still really fun to read this. Anyways, all right, last one I'll leave you with. Um, this is actually kind of cool. Asking GPT-3 how AI can be used in different fields. So let's ask how AI could be used to help CPA firms to prepare tax returns and provide tax advice. What do you think, GPT-3? What are some ways we can actually do this? Um, okay, could speed up the tax return preparation process by automating repetitive tasks. That's kind of a generic response, but I'll take it. Um, identify potential savings by analyzing and identifying patterns. Okay. Um, help CPAs provide more personalized, proactive tax advice by understanding their unique circumstances and needs. I like that. Um, stay up to date on tax law changes. That makes a lot of sense to me. And ooh, manage their practice more efficiently by automating administrative tax tasks and providing areas of improvement. This is pretty cool. Um, there's quite a bit more you can do with this that I've been playing around with. One other one, um, I don't have an example today, but even providing sort of like a quality review um, or even just like asking for like, 
risks around things. So in fact, let's try that. Let's say, um, what are some of the risks associated with implementing the above uh, suggestions? I should fix my spelling, implementing. And, uh, oh yeah, whatever. The risks with implementing those suggestions include potential for errors, reliance on AI technology, and for ongoing maintenance of things. Okay, that's that's reasonable. So yeah, it's kind of cool. You can have it check itself. You can ask follow-up questions. Um, pretty amazing. So definitely encourage you to check this out. I'm gonna be playing around with this a lot more because I think this is gonna play a significant role in the area of just, you know, everything we do in the world, um, but especially in the accounting field, I see a lot of potential here. Um, so I hope you enjoyed, and uh, if you liked it, go ahead and click like and subscribe so you can keep up with it, and uh, we'll see you at the next one.